this is my first video in my series called Back to Basics. In this series, we will be discussing some basics and understanding of some basic surgical steps which help a beginner surgeon and an advanced surgeon to improve their surgical skills. Now let us see the sketch of a top view of trench creation for the cataract. Now you will see that the length of the trench should not be more than 50 to 60 percent. Harder the cataract, longer the trench, softer the cataract, shorter the trench. Also, stop in the vacuum mode in the mid meat of the nucleus, embed the phaco tip exactly half to one millimeter in front of the phaco tip, embed your phaco chopper, and then as you embed the phaco chopper downwards, you split it towards the side while pulling the phaco tip in another direction to create a chop. Now, let us actually see the parameters. The lateral view of the trench will demonstrate approximately two phaco tips deep trench. If the cataract is hard, you can actually go for two and a half to three phaco tips deep. But in a normal moderate grade two to grade three cataract, a two phaco tip is good enough. And make sure that this phaco tip is slightly wide on both the sides so that the sleeve doesn't get stuck while creating the trench. Once you've done that, you divide the cataract into two pieces and rotate the segment. Now you have two D segments. Embed the phaco tip again in the central part of the diameter of the D segment and also the middle of the meat of the D segment. While doing so, now embed your phaco chopper right in front of the phaco tip, dip it deeper into the, the meat of the nucleus and separate your chopper to the left and move your phaco tip to the right. This will create a second chop. If you see if you see the lateral cut section of the cataract, you will notice that if you embed your phaco tip bang in the middle of the D segment or the depth of the D segment nucleus, you will get a good hold. And all you need to do is now push in your phaco tip vertically downwards towards the floor while you pull the D segment embedded in the nucleus of the phaco tip upwards. This will create a chopping force. While doing that, now you separate both these instruments and you will create another chop, another quadrant out of these two D segments. Now let us observe these two diagrams which explain the whole thing in detail. In a vertical chop, your chopper goes down vertically into the nucleus while your phaco tip goes into the nucleus at an angle of 30 to 40 degrees. As they both come together, your phaco tip is pulled upwards and your chopper is pulled downwards. This creates a chopping effect and while the phaco tip is going down, you also move the both instruments laterally away from each other. This creates a complete crack. The vectors of cracking can be seen on the lower right of the diagram. Your phaco chopper moves towards the left and your phaco tip, while embedded into the nucleus, moves to the right, creating a perfect crack or chop for you to observe. Let us see the diagram in freeze frame. In the first diagram, you see the chopper being embedded right in front of the phaco tip. And as the phaco tip is embedded in, the phaco tip is moving to the right and your chopper moves to the left, creating a chop. When then once you've created a chop, you just rotate the D segment, embed in the middle of the meat of the nucleus of the D segment, in the central part of the diameter of the D segment, and again repeat the same procedure to create a new chop vertically. Now let us review all the discussions done priorly. Notice the phaco tip embedded into the center of the nucleus, approximately 50% into the length of the nucleus and depth. And the chopper is embedded right in front of the phaco tip while being it's being pushed down. And now observe what happens. You embed the phaco tip and you embed the chopper right in front of it. Separate both of them. Remember that your phaco chopper has to face total downwards, eating into the depth of the nucleus. And then doing the same stuff or the same step for the D segment which was created. Again, embed in the center part of the nucleus, embed your phaco tip in front and separate. And there you notice, now you have four quadrants created out of a vertical chop and the whole process is covered within matter of couple of seconds. So knowing your vectors, where to embed your phaco tip, where to embed your phaco chopper and what are the vectors of separation will make the job a lot more easier. If your phaco tip is not embedded at adequate depth, and your chopper also is not penetrating to the adequate depth, your chopping will be ineffective and you will have an incomplete chop. Also, placing the phaco tip in front of the chopper is always more advantageous. 
we will see in the next coming video what happens if you place the phaco tip on either side of the chopper it just leads to loss of vectors of chopping this is another video where the cutters is slightly soft we demonstrate a vertical chop create the first d segment chop it into two now we embed the phaco tip in the middle part into the depth but our chopper is not in front of the phaco tip see what happens it creates a rotational force into the d segment and makes the chop ineffective so chopping in front of the phaco tip is always more advantageous ergonomic and faster and more consistent we've already done the rexes the recording started a bit late so we will proceed with the cortical cleaving hydro dissection this is a special cannula designed by me it's a curved cannula with a blunt edge this is a 23 gauge cannula now ac is shallow patient is a hypermetro there is a shallow ac the cataract will resist dialing in case it doesn't dial we can use the bimanual dialing but yes it is dialing now ma ji aap na gardan upar ghumaye ja rahe hain ma aise nahi kariye now we will demonstrate the straight peripheral chop in this particular case this is a case of toric iol so when you are doing a straight chop it's a good idea to have a significant amount of phaco tip exposure otherwise you will not get the grip as always lift the corneal wound before you enter this avoids desmans detachment now before you start your chop aspirate all the floating cortex on top of the nucleus the trick for having a good chop is always have your phaco tip vertically downwards so i will embed phaco 35 35 degree to 40 degree bent angulation of the phaco tip get into the meat of the nucleus embed just in front of your phaco tip downwards and separate and there you are you have a chop there we'll see we have a chop there we have a chop now the same thing is to be repeated go in the central diameter of the nucleus the d segment go in the middle of the thickness of the d segment embed with a short burst of phaco put your phaco tip down and separate both of them there you are now we will repeat the same step for the other part of the d segment hold in the center middle depth of the d segment nucleus just in front of your phaco tip while your vacuum is on dip down and separate both of them so now you have four segments all you need to do is aspirate each one of them so the tricks to remember are phaco tip should have a significant amount of embedment in the meat of the nucleus this works best for second grade grade 2 grade 3 and 3 plus cataracts now each nuclear segment will come so there we had four quadrants of the nucleus and there we are light ko dekhenge ma sir ji khatam hai aapka so now tricks as i said first of all estimate the right amount of phaco power angulate the phaco tip attack by 35 to 40 degree to the plane of the nucleus Before you do that aspirate the floating cortex on top of the nucleus once you have a depth approximately 1 and 1/2 to 2 phaco tips deep embedded into the nucleus go with your phaco chopper approximately 1 mm in front of your advancing phaco tip embed vertically downwards and as you go in separate your phaco chopper towards the left and your phaco to tip towards the right and you will achieve a beautiful chop